what uh, legislative issues are you currently working on right now? Oh, a whole host of them. Um, you know, healthcare uh, always is a very important issue. Trying to make sure that you're able to ha have it, that it's affordable. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, you know, in Florida, obviously the environment's a huge concern with the red tide and the blue green algae that's going on. Um, education is important to everybody's future. Um, minimum wage uh, is very important. I know to your membership, and it is to me. Mm -hmm. I think we need to raise it to fifteen dollars an hour. Um, yeah, that's just a few of them. Yeah. Um, so as far as like elected officials role, um, when it comes to uh, protecting workers' right to organize, how do you feel, what do you feel the role is of an elected official? To do feel? everything humanly possible <laughs> to make sure you have the right to organize. Yes. Whatever that might be. You know, from a legislative point of view, from a speaking out point of view. Um, you know, I view the job of a public servant as, you know, the role is to fight for the people. Uh, and that's how I view it. That's how I've always felt about it, uh, and I always will. Okay. Um, what do you believe is like the root cause of the recent attacks on workers' right to organize? Uh, well, I think they're two very distinct ideologies at work. Um, you know, as a uh, Florida Democrat, uh, I believe that the Democratic Party in our country uh, really is a party that looks out for people first. And sadly, many in the leadership of the Republican Party take uh, what seems to be a protect corporate America first point of view. Um, so I think that's part of it. Uh, why there's that uh, distinction, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but I'd rather be a member of the party that's for the people uh, than the party that maybe is for corporate America uh, and profits uh, ahead of people. Um, most people would say now that uh, our country is like really divided more than ever before. Yeah. Um, do you believe that? If so, like why? Uh, politically, it's very divided. There's no question about that. And um, it, I think there's several reasons why. Um, number one, the makeup of Congress and how it's made up uh, is determined largely by redistricting and how you know each of those legislative seats are drawn back in the states. And uh, you, let's say you have a Republican legislature, uh, as we do in Florida, with a majority, significant majority Republican in the House and the Florida Senate. They draw the districts and um, to favor the Republicans. So much so they did it in Florida that our Supreme Court ruled that they did it for that purpose and that it was unconstitutional to have done so. So they had to change them. But that's happening all over the country. Mm -hmm. So what you end up with are different districts that are either very red or very blue, for the most part, with some that are in the middle. But when you draw districts like that, you're going to have people winning those primaries, whether it's a Republican one or the Democratic one, that are a little bit more to the fringe than probably most Republicans and Democrats themselves are nationwide. So I think that contributes to it. Um, another thing I think that makes that uh, happen, the divisiveness, if you will, is the kind of rhetoric that we hear uh, in, in America today, coming from, you know, leaders that's uh, not civil and not gracious and not kind. And, you know, when people, words do matter. And when people use coarse words uh, to describe other human beings, uh, it can have the effect of creating a reaction from the person that's being spoken about uh, that's, you know, that includes anger. And uh, that, I think, also contributes to divisiveness. Okay. But I'm hopeful. I really <laughs> am. I, I, I think that um, you know, my freshman class is not a bad example in Congress. There's about 50 freshmen in my class, about half and half Republican and Democratic. And one of the first things we did was say that we would sign a pledge uh, and a commitment to civility, that we're not going to agree on everything, but we don't have to be disagreeable. And you know, we may not all vote the same way, which we certainly don't, but we can be decent to one another. Uh, and so that gives me hope that in, in my freshman class, there is that seed, if you will, of, and desire for 
uh, a more civil discourse, um, a more respectful tone. Um, and plus, I think the elections are going to make a difference that way, too. I, I, I hope and I pray things go well in November. I think they will. As we sit here today, it's only 49 days away. Um, elections matter, and they have consequences. And we certainly learned that two years ago. And I think people get it more than maybe ever. So uh, I think we'll have a good result in November, uh, and I think that will temper things uh, again some more. Okay. Um, what brings you the most joy about being a U.S. representative? Being able to help people. You know, I mean, we, it, it's wonderful uh, to be a member of Congress and let's say a veteran comes to you and they're having trouble getting their benefits or a senior citizen is having a challenge being able to get their Social Security check in a timely way. Um, or, you know, somebody that you know, is at work in a field somewhere in Florida feels they're being mistreated. Um, and it's amazing how sometimes when a business or an agency gets a call from a, a congressional office, how all of a sudden things can get real better real fast. And that's very gratifying. Not that it should take that to make that happen, um, but if that's the role and we can help uh, you know, people uh, be treated better, um, that's a joyful moment. Nice to make good happen. Thank you so much for your time. Thank it's my you. pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for your work. And whatever you need, you let us know. I work for you. You pay me, and I'm grateful. <laughs> All right? Thank you. Thank you very much.